white people that were beaten uh, as well. And, and yet, of, co of course, you know, the, the, the biggest crime of all is that the policemen actually walked. Uh, it just shows the corruption that is in the government system everywhere. And, and, and I spent time in law enforcement. I've seen it firsthand myself. Uh, and the funny thing is, let me just say this too, especially for the viewers, whether, you, you know, regardless of the ethnicity, ethnicity of our viewers that are, that are watching this program, as a law enforcement officer, I've seen law enforcement do this, not just to the black people, but to their own people as well. It's in law enforcement, it's not just, and this is why I want people to understand this, it's not just that the people, um, you know, that they're against one particular race or not. They, they in my opinion, they do profile. Uh, you don't have to just be black. If they think that you're quote unquote white trash, uh, they got something against you, they're going to do this to you as well. And, and I personally took up for a, a, a white man that was uh, chased down for running a stop sign. Uh, he didn't want to pull over because he'd been drinking and he didn't want to get to the UI. So he just tried to drive home and get away with this. This was back in, I think, at 1984, 85, somewhere in that time frame there. And uh, when the police finally got him, to, got at his house there, uh, he, they had about 20 something cruisers, uh, you know, following this guy and they beat him nearly to death. He's a white guy now. I had white officers, white guy. So see, it's not a matter so much as uh, sometimes color. And that's what people don't understand. They were angry with this guy. And it, I remember, Sister Mina, you brought out to me a point about power trip. Uh, Trayvon Martin, no doubt, was on a power trip. And, and, and I agree with you 100%. You know, you find that especially with people that are not quote unquote law enforcement officers, they're security officers. And for them, it's even more of a power trip. They want to show that they've got some kind of authority to be able to do something. And Trayvon Martin just ended up being at the wrong place at the wrong time with a, with a, with a guy that's got an issue here. Uh, so should he have been convicted? I mean, according to the jury that we that, we, that, that, that even spoke afterwards, the problem was not that they didn't believe that he was guilty of something here. It was the way the trial is presented, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And that's where they had the problem at. Uh, so our, our, our system is messed up as it is. And so therefore, there's many people that go unpunished uh, for crimes just because they, somebody thinks they're somebody. And, and, and I've, I've met many of people in my day that were in jail, incarcerated, that I personally felt were innocent. I uh, see that happen as well. Uh, but then again, we have the other side of the coin too. You know, there's so many people uh, that, that they get arrested for drugs or whatever, and it doesn't matter it, if you're white or black. They, they're right back out on the street again. They get a little slap on the wrist, nothing happens to them. They're right back on the street. Then of course, you've got the other side of that. People that have money, they can get the attorneys and, and it's just a political thing in the background. And so it is corrupt all the way to the core, from the White House all the way down to the janitor. To the janitor, I like that. I like that. So some of the highlights for the recent um, things that, that really has risen concern on in me um, that prompted you know this video too is like for instance um, in Delaware a couple weeks ago there was two um, women and they were both white uh, uh, the t age 24 and 32 who were sitting on a bench and um, at, at early in the morning or in the daytime I guess I don't know if they knew each other they were friends but um, they got uh, basically gang raped they were attacked by a group of they of 10 to 12 young black men and they were juveniles that just attacked them in the park and gang raped these two grown women um another uh, association of you know, more familiar things that people know um is this young australian um baseball player who was here on a scholarship who was jogging and uh these two two I think it was two black men and a white guy, I believe, that were together. And, and they the one of the black guys shot the boy. I mean, he was jogging and they just killed him. And, and when the police came and asked them why did they do it, they said because they were bored. Um, another incident that my husband brought to my attention, who was also in law enforcement, um, was just here last week where... Um, this guy was sitting on his porch, another, uh, again, another black guy sitting on his porch and 
He just jumped up and said that, you know, he was going to beat the next white person that walked past because he was just tired of, of what was what all the white people were doing to the black people. And he ended up, uh, long story short, uh, beating up three people, which left one person brain dead. He hit this guy in the head so hard, he ended up brain dead. Um, and I think the family recently just took him off of life support. and um, He died, unfortunately. Um, there was the 88 year old, I believe it was the World War II veteran who was beat up and killed, um, several weeks ago by also a black person. And, um, and so, and when this stuff started emerging over the last five to six weeks, I told my husband again, I reminded him, I said, I told you this was going to be our Arab Spring. And, and he was just floored with the whole situation, you know, and I was like, I told you, you know, and, and, and for those, I always give my, my profile later. Um, but I operate in the prophetic, you know, I'm a prophetess and the Lord gives me things, um, in dreams and visions. And he speaks to me, uh, that come to pass. And, and I had said this, I, I knew three months ago that this is, a, this was going to be um, the gatekeeper or the door opener for Satan to come in and, and wreak havoc and what is already a torn country by politics and amongst other things, uh, war and politics in this case, in this country. And so um, there is definitely an uprising and it's definitely spiritual um, where the enemy and his demons are infiltrating and going through you know these people and and these and these people are rising up and what's going to happen eventually is that right you know we're going to see a response from the white people because we have to remember you know there's the Aryan race the gangs they're still they still exist the Ku Klux Klan still exists I mean these people still exist and if it if enough of this erupts then that is, they're going to rise up and come and, and, and there's going to be even more problems and even bigger riots and even more trouble. And it's going to be dangerous. And that is going to give a, exactly prompt the, this administration to come in and implement martial law. He's been wanting to do it anyways. I mean, we had the Sandy Hook Elementary School crisis last year, you know. He's been, you know, the, excuse me, the, the shooting in Aurora, um, you know, all of these different things that have happened that happened last year. He's been trying to push this gun law, push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Um, and it's, you know, hit a lot of red tape because there's a lot of people, a lot of Americans who who love their guns. I mean, I'm, I spent 12 years in Texas. I mean, that's the gun state. <laughs> You know, or what have you, but, um, you know, he's been hitting red tape. And so if he can start a civil uprising, I mean, that, that right there is enough, you know, that the people will cry out. And so again, the point is, is that I want the blacks, the white, I want the Christian people, I'm, I, even if the non-Christian believers see this video, I want them to understand that it is a setup. So that yes, you don't is. fall into the trap. It is a setup because I want everybody to know that the goal, the goal of this administration is to break this country. The end. This is, it's not about race. And it's become, just the fact that we have a black president in office has brought so much racial tension. You would, you would think that it would actually uh, heal racial separation and say that America has come far, you know, since the, the 50s and the 60s during the, the civil rights movement with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King among, uh, you know, Coretta Scott and, and, and Rosa Parks and all these people that I learned about when I was a kid in school, you know, that fought for the right. You would think that we would say, Wow, you know, we've come this far, but that has not been the case. This, this administration has been used to cause more division, 
more separation among the American people than ever before. And I stand firm on that. And I'm going based off of facts, not based off of fantasies and delusions and CNN and MSNBC, because those are all, it's all falsified documents. It's fraudulent. They give pieces of the truth. And Jesus clearly warned us that a little leaven leavens the whole lump. That's it. It only takes a little bit of lie to make it a whole lie. And so these these people on these news, they're being paid to tell us lies. The end. Okay? <laughs> they're being, right. you'll that's, find that's more exactly of the right. truth on the internet than you will turn it on your local news. That's just the end of the story. Even though there's a lot of crackpots yeah. out there on the internet as well. You know, so and I, I, I'm just putting my piece in on that one, but it, it we need to wake up. We yes. need to wake and, up you know, and see. Go on. There's one thing, a couple of things I want to bring bring up uh, in, in light of the things that you've said. You can look back in the civil rights movement and, there, of course, and I'm sure even in the civil rights movie, movement, there were those that were probably more for maybe popularity. I, I don't know. I really think when you look at Martin Luther King, people like this man here, he had a sincere passion from what I, from everything that I've ever gleaned from it, uh, you know, from the studies in school and everything, you know, he was there for a righteous cause. He was never there for violence, uh, you know. And what has happened to the to that type of movement? Like you said, if we have, which we, it's obvious that we have a a black man that is president of the United States, that should have been one of the greatest achievements of all time. Um, in, in this country to show that that divide is being broken down finally. Uh, and I think Martin Luther King would be very pleased uh, to, if he were still living today to be able to see this. Uh, and yet you take someone like Jesse Jackson, and, and I've never met Jesse Jackson personally. I have been in the airport with him before when he got off a plane. Uh, it was just a few feet from him. And, and yet even though he was back as part of that, Today, the Jesse Jackson that I actually saw was a man that was hungry for media popularity and attention and, and what could he get to further Jesse Jackson. And that was just a few minutes that I seen before the camera crew got there, what he was saying, and then the way he approached the camera crew that was there. It was all about Jesse. It's not really about, you know, civil rights. It's not about the, the people being equal and, it, and it's just really sad to see something like that uh, and another thing too as we point out the the different uh, upswing and violence against uh, white people uh, perpetrated by by black people that are angry over Trayvon Martin uh, we've got the white nutcracks out there as well that are doing the same thing uh, now I realize that what you're pointing out is it's it's definitely an upscale as far as the uh, black people going uh, attacking the white people fr based uh, and, and really motivated from Trayvon Martin uh, the case there and of course the media uh, exposing this but you know then, then again here in Florida we had uh, uh, I believe it was Jordan Russell Davis uh, that uh, I actually pulled it up on the internet and I remember this case here a young man that was killed uh, just because a white guy pulls up beside his car, he doesn't like the loud music, and and then the, this this crazy man, uh, Michael Dunn, I think was his name, the killer, the alleged killer, uh, pulls out a gun and fires eight or nine rounds into a car full of full of kids and everything over music, you know. I mean, so it, it, you can tell it is it is it, as you said, it, you know, this is an agenda of the government to have a reason to disarm the nation. And, and why? We see that the government has not been able to get Congress to pass any bill to do any kind of disarmament, not even things that, that should be disarmed. I mean, I realize that we have this big issue over, okay, the, the amendment right that we have to be able to bear arms in case the government gets out of control, we can rise up. I, I'm not for that. We, we live in a society where that's really nonsense to even say. I mean, the whole nation is armed to the hilt. And... You know, do I believe in the right to bear arms? Absolutely. But do I believe it to be able to rebel against the government? No. This is what this is why we have politics. We have so many we have different groups there that can 
debate it, fight it out with each other, and we don't have a situation where our military uh, bows down to our president anyway. You know, the polit political leaders are just like figureheads to start with. But what's really sad, though, is that they couldn't even get after all these children have been murdered in schools. They couldn't even come together to pass a ban on maybe something as simple as magazines for the assault weapons or, or even pass a ban for assault weapons, you know, uh, or, or pass a ban for assault weapons. And those that have them, you know, you know, do some kind of uh, psychological evaluations or something to see if they should even have it. I mean, what I mean? It's, it's crazy. But they banned being homeless in, in Columbia, South Carolina, and in Tampa, Florida, and in uh, Portland, uh, Oregon, where the homeless people can be, can't be homeless. And, and they set up detention centers in Columbia, South Carolina, mind you, brother, where it's really a detention center. People have, have on the internet have gone crazy over this and called it FEMA camps, where they're not wow. shelters where the people can come in and leave as they please. If they scoop you up, kind of reminds me of that 1973 Charles and Heston movie, Soylent Green, where they had that curfew and the garbage dump trucks were scooping the people up that were out past 10 o'clock at night. Well, in, in, in Columbia, South Carolina, if you get scooped up because you're a homeless person, you have one or two choices. Either you go to jail or you go to this detention camp. And the detention camp is set 15 miles outside of the city limits where the people have to go there. And once they go there, they can't leave unless they get special written permission and then if they do get the written permission, they're shuttled out. That's all it says, wow. dot, dot, dot. And my joke was when I first heard this, shuttled to where? To the guillotines? What are they doing with these people? They were able to legalize that. In addition to that, Brother Steve, they were able to legalize banning missionaries and churches feeding the homeless. Yes, it's I heard that. illegal. So they they can't they can't ban assault weapons, but they can ban feeding homeless people and ministering to them. They can try to force the churches to marry homosexual people. They they have a right to sue the bakery for not baking a cake for them. They can throw the homeless people into detention camps who have a right to live on the streets or right not to work. If that's what they choose to do, but but in a case like this, they can't get their junk together. But here's the joke on top of that. In addition to that, this administration has been in what? This is his fifth year, and this country still doesn't have a budget. So go figure on that. You know that you know, Sister Mina, it's really interesting you point some of these things out. And and because I've heard these same things as well, you know, that they're banning being able to help these type of people, and yet um, my wife is from Slovakia originally. She, she grew up under communistic regime. And for the last several years, she has constantly told me over and over and over, this nation is headed to what I lived under. And she said, and the American people have no idea what Obama is doing right now. What he's, I mean, no clue. I mean, the people have no clue as to what this administration is doing. And, and, and when I hear these type laws being passed, I, here's one for you. I mean, this is a law that's always it's been into effect for many, many years, but I've, I used to always kind of think it's kind of stupid. They have, you can't drink and drive, but yet you go to the bar. What do they think that people leave sober? I mean, I never could quite understand that. I mean, if you're going to have don't drink and drive, you need to have a busing system then for the bars, you know? And, and yeah, but no, but what is it? It's a money maker. They make a don't drink and drive. Why? Because all the lawyers who end up getting into politics anyway make millions of dollars of suing each other over the fact that you drove and you drove while you were drunk and you killed everybody in that guy's family or you know, I mean, this is 
it's gone, it's gone man, says, you know, they take, I told my wife, I said, look, they take the, the name, they take God out of the schools, take the Bible out of the schools, take discipline out of the schools. Now the schools have become a bunch of neurotics. All the kids are crazy. The teachers, what are they allowed to do? Yell. You know, how, how far do you think yelling is going to get you? You know, not at all. And then they wonder why kids go in there and they go berserk and they go shoot everybody in the school because they know there's no, no nothing's going to happen. There's no retribution whatsoever. Uh, this nation is getting exactly what happens when you forsake God. And that's what's happening to this nation. And the same thing when, when this... Uh, I don't want to forget one thought, Sister Mina, before I get on a tantrum here. Um, you mentioned to me about subliminal messages before we came on uh, a couple of days ago. We were talking about this. Can you elaborate on what you know about that? Oh, I was just talking about how everything we face today is subliminal messages. There are things that are in our face. Um, and, and just to, to say, I'm, I'm a mother of three children who are um teenagers and and i mean i'm in my mid-30s and so i'm not that old and and i remember you know i i gradual i was i'm a child of the 80s you know in the 90s when you know hip-hop and all that stuff was really peaking um before it became before it crossed over into gangster rap and became something that's not even music today it's just garbage but i came out of that era and, you know, I, I think all of our parents, we've all, at some generation, I think going all the way back to the 50s when Elvis Presley first came out, you know, and the parents started saying, oh, this generation is so awful, you know, they're so ruthless. And, and, and I talk about how, you know, in the 90s and the 80s, late 80s and early 90s, because I was out of school by the early 90s, but, you know, how what we had to face was, uh, you know, your drugs, your alcohol, um, there was a percentage of dropouts, there was teen pregnancy, um, and there were gangs. And this is just growing up in Chicago, okay, that was not that bad back then, okay? So those were things that we did face, okay? And we, we knew who the bad kids were and, and who weren't the bad kids or what have you. And and yet, at that time, my mother and my father and, you know, all them were like, oh, you know, we didn't have to deal with that when we were kids and so on and so forth. But now today, <clears throat> today in today's society, I mean, my children have to face all of that in addition to, you know, the homosexuality, the lesbianism. I mean, they passed a rule where they're making the bathrooms unisex. They're passing a rule in California where it all the way up to the sixth grade, if a little boy decides that he wants to be a female and he wants to use the girl's bathroom, he has the right to do so. And the same thing with the little girl who wants to go in the boy's bathroom because she feels like she wants to be a boy has the right to do so. You know, so we got all of this crap that's that, that the kids are being faced with today. I had a friend down in Texas when her daughter was in high school recently, a few years ago, she was terrified to go in the bathroom because it had been taken over by these masculine lesbians who used to prey on the feminine girls when they would go to the bathroom. This was down in Houston, you know. And so with all of that, in addition to the, it started with the Columbine shooting in 1999, which by then I was long out of school. But, you know, now we've got the shootings and, and, and you know, it, it, all the way up until last year with the Sandy Hook shootings in elementary school and that whole entire kindergarten class perished. I mean, this is what our children are facing today. Now, that's the in-your-face stuff. But then there's the subliminal stuff that is everywhere. I mean, in the billboards, on your television, on the Internet, the flashing things the, that, that are subliminal signs. You know, there's the whole uh, rise of the Illuminati that people at first started saying, was just a conspiracy theory. I'm here to tell you right now, it is not. I was in the music industry for two and a half years. I was a promoter. I worked with major R&B singers. And I, I was actually offered a $100,000 advance to bring my, the branch out and come to the East Coast. I turned it down. This was in 2007. 
I turned it down because I knew I was getting into ministry. And I knew that when I got into ministry, I could not bring anything secular. I had to sell out to Jesus, basically. But I'm here to tell you that when I was in that music industry, that thing is very, very true. And these people, I don't let my children listen to these people. You know, these these Katy Perry, you know, what's so sad about Katy Perry is that her parents are Pentecostal preachers. And she literally went on tape and said she had sold her soul to the devil. We've got the Beyonce. Look, I'm from Houston. I know people that went to school with her. I know about the whole Destiny Child group. I know the church that they went to. Okay, the the Baptist church that she belonged to. You know, and and she didn't start out like that. When she got with Jay-Z, that was the end of it. This man, Jay-Z, he's a 33rd degree Mason. And let me tell you something about the Masons. When they get up to that 31st, 32nd, and 33rd degree, they are, it is unveiled to them that they are worshiping Baphomet. Okay, I did a deep study on the Masons years ago. They are not Christians. They they start off in the lower levels, and, and unfortunately, it has been a big attraction to black people. Um, because they are over the sororities that go on in the colleges, the Alpha, Beta, Omega, I don't, you know, all the, they, they, they funded that. They started that, you know, and they're tied into that. And it attracts a lot of the black people, but it is a cult. It is an occult, yes, excuse it me, is, is yes, what it, it is. is. And I mean, it's just plain and simple, but they don't tell you that at first. And it goes back to that little leaven that leavens the whole lump. They start off in the Bible. They start off with the Ten Commandments. They teach you everything from Genesis to Revelation. It is a trick of Satan because it's not until you go up high enough and you go through what they consider to be a black communion, okay? Where they take communion in black black cloaks and they drink blood out of a skull, okay? And they don't do this until you get up into the highest ranks. And basically, you are turning your life over to Satan. You are worshiping Baphomet. Jay-Z wow. is a, a 30, 32nd, it might be 32nd and not 33rd, degree Mason. And that symbol, which I'm going to put up on the screen, and everybody knows this symbol, is and that's, all... You said that's Jay-Z, is that? Jay-Z is the rapper. He is the highest Oh, Jay-Z, okay. Highest paid rapper in this country, okay? And he is married to Beyonce. That sign that everybody uses is the all seeing eye, which is on the back of your yes. dollar bill. It is the eye of Ra, okay, which was an Egyptian god back in before the time of the flood, okay? And all of that is ties to the Nephilim, which are the fallen angels, okay? Do you know, your- let me just 